Well, if you just bought an i5 14600K or 14600F and you want strictly more performance by going with a traditional overclock, this is the right video for you guys. So let's get straight into it. Now, little disclaimer, for most people, I actually recommend you undervolt because unless you have a very good cooling system, you are probably gonna get more performance by doing a proper undervolt and they have a tutorial on the channel about how to do just that we also cover how to undervolt uh, gpus and all kinds of cpus now this tutorial will also work for the i7 from the 14th gen and it's also going to be very similar for the i5 for the 13th gen we are using an msi bios but this is going to work for every motherboard out there the only difference is going to be the name of the settings now if you want to see which one of these settings compares to your motherboard let's say you have an asus motherboard gigabyte motherboard you want to go in my overclocking and undervolting playlist and just double check with other videos with intel because i basically have every vendor covered but it will have a different cpu but by doing some cross-referencing you will get it dialed down so one last thing is if this tutorial ends up being helpful make me a promise and tell me you will drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more Okay, let's get started. Okay, so here we are in the BIOS. Now, first off, we're gonna go in the advanced mode, which in the MSI board is done by clicking F7. Now, once we're here, we wanna go in the overclocking settings and we wanna just start tuning off the get-go. So if you have an OC Explorer mode, put it on expert. And then you also wanna make sure you have your XMP for your RAM enabled. So in this case, I just click here, but uh, sometimes you don't have the immediate option over there. So you will have to go down until you find extreme early profile xmp and just put it to enable now this is not part of the overclocking so test this separately but just be sure to have this enabled it's free performance you pay the tram for a reason you know let's go with the actual overclocking so how we do this is we basically are gonna do a static all core overclock and then we are gonna show you basically how to tune the voltage to push it higher so we're gonna start from a baseline which is 57 5.7 gigahertz on the cpu and then we are gonna just uh, basically go and increase it depending on what you want to do so at this point we start from 57 and this is basically your performance core frequency now we go down eco ratio and now here we put 42 right there okay so at this point you also want to put the per pico ratio limit and just put all of this to 57 now this shouldn't really be needed as just putting 57 here should be enough as you can see we are raising it from 53 to 57 okay and same goes for the eco ratio limit you just put 42 on all of these and cpu ratio mode we can leave dynamic on now at this point we want to go into the advanced cpu configuration and bclk 100 megahertz lock on if you have this enable this if you don't have this it might also be called spread spectrum or something like that bclk spread spectrum just disable it you want this basically locked on now at this point next step is going to be to unlock all the power limits so there are two ways to do this one easier way and one more complex way and uh, the way i do recommend is going to be to quite simply go down here on cpu cooler tuning and just put the one with the maximum uh, power limit you can find right there however just in case if you don't have this option here's how you unlock everything manually so you want to go in advanced cpu configuration right there and you want to find this section with all the long duration power limits etc and you want to basically put all nines in all of these put the maximum time put all nines and it will basically just automatically lock it at uh, 4096 4 watts which is the maximum now at this point we are now going to be working with voltages because we have our baseline at 5.7 gigahertz on the p cores 4.2 gigahertz on the e cores everything locked out unlocked in terms of power limiting so it is just a matter of actually going ahead and setting a proper voltage now another thing you want to keep in mind is this so if you're encountering stability issues only when running avx workloads you want to put an offset here like a minus three is usually advised uh, if you're running like heavy avx and it's making your pc crash but in my case we are not going to tune that so let's go down until we find the actual voltage now on cpu core voltage mode okay so right here we want to put this and now pay attention because this is i guess the tricky part while people make mistakes and now here we are going to be going with adaptive plus offset mode bear with me with this one because it's maybe a little different from the other tutorials but uh, i have tested it and uh, on 14 gen especially this seems to work better core voltage we want to put to 1.2 which is going to be our base then from our base 
we're gonna put an offset. Now we're gonna be doing basically the same when it comes to the E core, okay? Again, bear in mind with me, but here we just put offset. As I told you, this tutorial is basically gonna be starting from a certain frequency and then we're gonna be going up. So this is the starting point. If you wanna just copy this, you can just go here, go into minus and put 0 0.05 right there. In here, go into minus and put 0 0.05 right there. Now. I expect the comments. I know you're going to be saying, hey, but uh, what is this? Like, why are we overclocking with a lower voltage? Okay, so this is a voltage point overclocking. Uh, but again, it's just baseline starting point because this CPU, if, if left alone, goes very high with the uh, core clock. But basically now we are making it draw less power, making sure it doesn't hit power limit. It doesn't throttle down. So this is actually going to be uh, overclocked under load compared to stock because it's going to run the frequency we set indefinitely. So it's effectively an overclock. But this is just the starting point. So if you want to go higher with the frequency, so for example, you want to put 57, 58 here, let's say, or this is not stable for you because as you know, every CPU is different. Well, what do you do? You increase the offset, but it's a negative offset. So you decrease it. So you go 0 0.03 if you're testing the P cores. And if you're testing the E cores, you go 0 0.03 on the E cores. You test this and see if it's stable. If it's not stable, you go 0 0.02. Okay, now you will arrive at the point uh, when to go higher in frequency, you're actually gonna need to give it more voltage, not less offset. If your CPU cooler can handle it, and that's a whole other topic, which is the reason we are doing this, you will then have to go with a plus. So when you go with a plus, you're gonna be dramatically increasing the um, power output of your CPU. So be sure to do this only if your cooler can handle it and be sure to double check, double test and make sure everything is running smooth and stable, if it makes sense. But this is how you do it. For example, if we went with 1.2, positive offset, 0 0.02 on both, I know we will probably be able to push this close to 6 GHz if you have a good CPU. But this is how you do it. Again, if you want something more simple, more plug and play, I do recommend you check out my under vaulting video. But this is modern day voltage point overclocking explained and I hope it was helpful and hopefully you will drop a like and a sub uh, because you liked the video. So see you in the next one. Bye.